A barren landscape, seven hours by car from Tehran. The people who live here work hard to get anything from the land. The farmers and the farmhands in this area come from the Kurdish minority of Iranians. Poverty has always been rife here, but under Shah Reza Pahlavi, people had even less. Since the Mullahs came to power, however, Kurds are economically better off. The regime in Tehran has invested in infrastructure and continues financial support, keen not to stir up the dissatisfaction of separatists. Kurds in neighboring Iraq live in an autonomous zone, and Tehran knows that it would be easy to ignite a republican passion. Kurdish women have always enjoyed more freedom and independence than their Muslim counterparts, because their nomadic husbands do not have houses to lock them up in. However, Iranian Kurds have no political freedom. They are not recognized as an official minority as in Iraq and Turkey. The Shah controlled them through the brutal secret service, out of fear of a war of independence. And the new regime isn't going to loosen the reins. Informants are everywhere. The center of Muslim Kurdistan is Sanandash. The hills around this Kurdish capital are watched constantly by the military. These mountains lie directly on the drug route from Afghanistan to Turkey. The presidential elections in Tehran and the struggle between the liberal mullahs and the more right-wing opponents don't really interest the people here. They've just learned to align themselves with whoever has power. Religion, not politics, governs the life here. The Kurds are Sunni Muslims, not, like the majority of Iranians, Shiite. And they have their own special holy men, dervishes. After the women have left the village to the dervishes, the men start a centuries-old dance ritual. The men dance themselves into a trance to try and get nearer to God. A dervish is an Islamic mystic seeking enlightenment. The earth is my floor, the heaven is my ceiling. The earth is my floor, the heaven is my ceiling. This is the motto of holy men across the Muslim world. Fire burns, a knife cuts. Similarly, the body will wither. Only the spirit lasts forever. The body is nothing. God has said, Islam is the ultimate faith. Through our faith, we can train our spirit so as to control our body, so we have no fear of knives or fire. The men dance for three hours. The room gets very hot. The whole ritual cleanses the spirit and leads closer to God. Ever more dancers fall into a trance. They've entered into another world, the world of their religion, where pain does not exist. Such supernatural abilities make for a fantastic spectacle for the outsider. But for the dervish, it is the proof that the spirit can overcome the body. The dervishes, who once used to denounce all world goods, have now adapted to modern life. This man, for example, runs a fitness center with his wife. Because the women aren't allowed to attend the rituals, they can only watch their husbands on video. This man has trained for 22 years, but it wasn't until he was 38 that he could stick metal pins through his skin. I had a dream that I could put pins through my skin. After this dream, I was ready to sacrifice my life. 
When I'm in this state, I can see everything, I can hear everything, but my spirit is somewhere else altogether with my master. He helps me and nothing happens to me. For me, it is an honor to be married to a dervish. That he has such powers shows me that his body and soul are clean. The Kurdish community is still centered around the balance between their religion and their tribal rights. They don't get much from the state. The rulers of Iran are only too aware that this small minority have not given up on their dream of a national homeland. The Kurds draw great strength from their traditions and this is the lesson that the Kurds take from the dervish. <laughs>